सो लेट स्टार्ट विद द टूडेज लेक्चर द लॉ ऑफ डिग्रेडेशन ऑफ एनर्जी इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एज अक्सर्ज पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू द लॉ ऑफ डिग्रेडेशन ऑफ एनर्जी ओके सो दियर वी गोइंग टू डिस्कस इफ यू सी द फर्स्ट लॉ ऑफ थर्मोडाइनमिक्स वेर द फर्स्ट लॉ टोल दैट ओनली द टर्म्स ऑफ कॉन्जर्वेशन ऑफ एनर्जी द फर्स्ट लॉ गिव द वन टर्म दैट इज वी कॉल एज इंटरनल एनर्जी ओके द कंक्लूजन ऑफ द फर्स्ट लॉ और द ऑलवेज दे आस्क इन द डिफरेंट मल्टीपल चॉइस क्वेश्चन एग्जाम और दैट गेट एग्जाम द फर्स्ट लॉ इज रिलेटेड विद द कॉन्जर्वेशन ऑफ एनर्जी and they give the one term that is the internal energy okay is very important that is the term from that first law is the internal energy when we go through the further okay the second law of thermodynamics which relates with the only not a conversion it is also discussed with the quality of energy okay so the quality of energy if we see the degradation of energy where is the going to energy going to degrade degrade so the second law told or the light on quantity as well as quality of energy at the end of the conclusion of the second law the clausius conclude the new term that is the entropy okay we move further we also discuss the what kind of energies available and the unavailable energies are there so we going to prove here the quality of energy degradation of energy that is the law of degradation of energy where the energy going to degrade and what conditions so where is simple derivation is very simple derivation so we going to discuss here let us consider any cycle on ts diagram okay if you see the first cycle the first cycle is if you see a b c d and a this is one cycle is there okay the where addition of heat at takes place at temperature t1 which is a q1 the rejection of heat is it carried out at the atmospheric temperature or the lowest temperature is also sink temperature is the t0 so the addition of heat at t1 q1 the rejection of q2 at t0 temperature this is the cycle one kind of cycle is there a b c d okay and that cycle i am going to plot on ts okay so the consider cycle a b c d okay the what amount of addition of heat is there q1 is equal to temperature into change in entropy t1 into delta s okay so the delta s if you going to calculate here is sb minus sa while addition of heat we know the general formula the dq is equal to also the entropy is nothing but change in entropy is nothing but dq by t so what kind of heat is added is the product of temperature at what temperature is heat is added into change in entropy so the simple formula is t into ds we going to apply here addition of heat while rejection of heat q1 and q2 just only focus on the abcd cycle okay so is the q1 and q2 we calculate by simple formula so available energies we know that addition of heat minus rejection of heat is the available energy so the available energy for that cycle is nothing but T one minus T zero into delta S. This is for the one cycle. Now, if you going to change some parameter in the cycle, what about that available energy? We now going to discuss. Now, consider the heat transferred Q one through finite temperature difference from the reservoir at T one to the engine absorbing heat at T one dash. lower than the t1 that is t1 is greater than t1 dash okay so in the next cycle if i am consider okay initially the addition of heat is carried out at constant temperature t1 is a higher temperature if i consider if addition of heat is carried out at t1 dash temperature and that t1 dash temperature is lower than t1 temperature okay T1 dash temperature is lower than T1 temperature. If the addition of heat is carried at at lower temperature as compared to T1, so the addition of heat is carried at T1 dash temperature. So the next cycle becomes okay. I am going to change your ink color. Okay, so I am taking color. So we can easily understand the next cycle is E F G D 
E. This is the next cycle. Okay. The condition is that T1 is greater than T1 dash. So the next cycle addition of it is carried out at T1 dash. So see what happened for that cycle. We're going to calculate again Q1. Okay. If we see here, Q1 addition of it is the same again. Okay, T1 dash into delta S because it compensate area. What I observe, if I going to decrease the addition of it temperature, okay, but if we see the area under that Q1 and the area under that uh, next Q1 dash cycle, okay, next cycle for that addition of it is carried out at the EF line. If you see EF line, both, both the process the addition of heat is the same which compensate the area but q2 dash what amount of heat rejected for the first cycle is a q2 and the next cycle is the q2 dash where i am keeping q1 q1 same because the same heat i am going to add okay input is the same what amount of heat is added is the same okay but if you see the rejection of heat the area under if you see the first cycle, the duration of heat is area under C2D. Okay, if you see the area under C2D. But if you check the second cycle, if you go through the second cycle, the area is under G2D. So the area rejection of heat, if you observe this cycle, okay, the rejection of heat for the second cycle is more. The Q2 dash is T0 into delta S dash. Okay, but the Q2 dash is greater than Q2. The heat rejection is more. Heat rejection area is more. Okay, so the work developed by the second cycle is less as compared to the first cycle. Okay, the first cycle which is ABCD and the second cycle is EFGD. And what we observe that, okay, when the taking the two cycles, I'm going to plot on the TS diagram, what I observe, the addition of heat for the both cycle is the same. But when the addition of heat is carried at lower temperature, the rejection of heat is more. Okay, if we see the cycle EFGD, where the rejection of heat is more, if the rejection of heat is more, then work available is also less. Because general formula is that what amount of heat we supplied. Okay, work, work developed is nothing but what amount of heat we supplied minus rejection of heat. If rejection of heat is more, then work available is also less. So, here we conclude the above aspects lead us to conclude that the conclusion are very important. ABCD is power cycle. Cycle ABCD is power cycle when the heat is available at T1. When heat is available at T1, area under CD represents the unavailable portion of energy. Area under CD. If you see the area under CD, this is the area under CD which indicates the unavailable portion. If we consider second cycle, EFGD is a power cycle when the heat is available at T1 dash. Okay, if we heat add at T1 dash temperature, the area under DJ then represents the unavailable energy. Okay, if we are going to compare these both unavailable energies, what we conclude? The addition of heat at lower temperature, there is more chances of unavailable energies more. So the available work is going to decreases. So increase in unavailable energy due to irreversible heat transfer is then represented by the shaded area under CG. If you see this shaded area, increase in unavailable energy. Why is this increase in unavailable energy? We are going to change the addition of heat temperature. So is the increase in unavailable energy. This is the third conclusion we conclude. That is increase in unavailable energy equals the decrease in available energy. Okay, it's very important. If we increase the unavailable energy, which equals to the decrease in available energy. Whenever heat transport through the finite temperature difference, there is always loss of available energy. If the source and sink temperature difference is less, 
the available energy is also less if the so finally we conclude here there is the temperature difference is more we can extract more energy if temperature difference is less if temperature difference is less we can extract less energy so it is the law of degradation of so the concept of available energy provides useful measure of energy energy set degraded each time it flows through the finite difference so it is the final conclusion so the second law therefore be referred as a law of degradation of energy i think hopes you understood this concept of degradation of energy